Good morning, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I have not seen y'all in quite a while, but we are uh, back in town and it took me a week to get everything back in order. And I wanted to come on here and say good morning. It is about, let's see, it's 7.27 my time in the morning. And I'm up early because I'm going to be um, working some today. Um, and I just wanted to say hey to y'all because I haven't seen you in a long time. I also want to read a little bit in Psalms this morning. But I thought I'd, you know, get on here and see if anybody has anything to say first. Um, I can see your comments. So y'all say good morning to me. And uh, Marilyn is up. And she says, you're up early. Yes, I'm an early bird anyway. I'm always up early. Um, I love to get up early. And it's so quiet in the house. And I have a few hours by myself. And it's just nice. Um, I hope y'all can hear me because I don't have on my big speaker. You know. Um, I thought about coming on earlier this week and saying, uh, Starting something, you know, because I like to read the Bible in the mornings. Um, but I have decided that I will start coming on and reading in Psalms because it's a beautiful uh, book in the Bible. And so we're going to read a little bit in Psalms this morning. I'm probably going to start doing it early in the mornings. And all we're going to do is read a Psalms and we're going to uh, look at the review if there's one in my women's study Bible. Okay. So, this morning, I'm just going to read you the first chapter, okay? Not first chapter. I am going to read the first chapter, but first I'm going to tell you about the author of Psalms. I'm just going to read this out of my women's study Bible. This is a women's study Bible. I know it's backwards, but that's what it looks like. And so, um, I'm going to do that. I'm glad you can hear me fine. I was thinking since it's early, there's not a lot of noise going on, so maybe y'all could hear me good. Uh, we're going to talk about the author of Psalms this morning, and the next time I read, we'll talk about the date of Psalms. It says, the book of Psalms is a collection of worship songs, and they're written in a by a variety of authors, okay, over an extended period of time in Israel's history. It says the superscriptions, titles, or headings of some of the psalms identify them with certain individuals or groups. Other psalms contain no reference to authorship. Um, it says the individual most frequently mentioned is David. And we know David is the subject in a lot of these psalms, or the author of a lot of these psalms. And it says that the entire book of psalms generally is associated with him. Um, he was recognized as the sweet psalmist of Israel. And you can see that in 2 Samuel 23, verse 1. And it says the phrase of David appearing in the titles of many psalms may also be translated to, to David or for David, uh, conveying the sense of belonging to, the, the, uh, to the, his collection of psalms. And then it says other individuals um, and groups associated with some of the Psalms include Asaph, Solomon, Ethan, Moses, and the son of Korah. So um, I just thought I'd tell you all that this morning before we start. Um, the next time I read, I will read about the date. And then we'll, we'll I'll, I'll just kind of hit the highlights of the Psalms and then start reading a Psalm. Uh, until we finish the highlights, okay? So today we're just going to read Psalm 1. And uh, I think these are really pretty. Um, they're songs. They're stuff that we're supposed to meditate on and think about, you know, and it helps us start our day. So really, I'm just going to start. There's a lot of Psalms. Let's see how many Psalms there are. Some of you may know, but let's just see. If I did nothing but read a Psalm to y'all in the morning... Um, there are 150 of them. So I could read a psalm every day for 150 days. That's a lot because they're short and they don't take long, um, too. So I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to read Psalm 1. If you want to read with me, you can. Now, 
I'm actually reading out of this book, and this book, this Bible is actually a King James Version, uh, but it's a new King James Version, okay? So that's the difference. My new Bible is the old King James Version, and I know I'm old school, but I just love it. Um, I think of it, it'll grab my, well, I'll read this one. I'll read this one. Um, Psalm 1, it says, The way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. That is the title at the top, okay? It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So that's the first one. So they're talking, he's uh, talking about the blessed, the blessed man who is righteous and the ungodly man. And um, I love the Psalms because they're like that. They'll tell you something positive and then they turn around and tell you the opposite. A lot of them do. So it kind of gives you a picture of, they kind of give you an example of what they're talking about. Um, now I'm going to read the study Bible's version, you know, like her synopsis or whatever. And actually this is written by a woman. Um, it says the blessed individual is described on both the negative and positive phrases in this wisdom Psalm. It says, see a chart that's called the choice between life and death. It says the word blessed is plural in the Hebrew text, perhaps denoting the fullness of blessing that comes to the person who obeys the Lord. To know and do the will of God is the essence of wisdom. Happiness and blessing belong to the individual who delights in and continually meditates on God's word. Such meditation is not primarily mental knowledge, but a constant yielding to the will of God. Uh, stability and fruitfulness belong to the individual who focuses continually on obedience to God. That says a lot right there, don't it? So I know, um, I know I don't have that many viewers that want to look at the Bible study, and that's actually normal because um, naturally we are not drawn to the Word of God because we're in our flesh here on this earth. But spiritually, we are. So it's natural that a lot of people who tune in tune off when they hear the Word of God or see that I'm doing a Bible study. It doesn't bother me at all because I love it because the ones who are um, in tune to their spirituality will listen, you know, and um, it's just nice to have somebody here in the mornings to read with me. Um, so we'll probably do this. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do it every single day, but a lot of days, starting today. Um, but I just think it's nice to read in the Psalms. I hope y'all enjoyed it this morning. And remember that um, the Lord does bless us when we, when we listen and follow His lead, you know. And if you get in the Word of God every day, then you're more apt to be in His lead. Um, a lot of us... Um, want to feel like we're spiritual and want to feel like that we're doing the right thing but then we don't take the time out to let god talk to us you know we always talk to him through prayer um but we should always 
think about him as well. So, and I'm just as guilty as everybody else, y'all, um, for it. So just remember, the good thing about having y'all here with me in the mornings, and let's do in a Bible study together, is it does keep me active in this word too, which is good. And it would keep y'all active as well. I hope y'all are having a blessed weekend. It is Saturday, the weekend before Thanksgiving. It is so hard to believe that Thanksgiving is already here. Uh, we were gone for three weeks, and so it just seems like it's crept up on me so fast. And um, But we're ready. I have a new ailment. I guess I'll tell y'all about it. Um, just so y'all can pray for me. My body is the strangest thing since I went through chemotherapy. And while we were gone, um, I had um, something happen in my back, which my back never, ever hurts. And it started hurting really bad while we were gone. And I noticed a fluttering sound. And so I thought it might be coming from my lung. And I let the nurse listen to it. Um, and... I went to the urgent care, and they sent me to the ER. Anyway, they couldn't find anything wrong with my lungs, which is good. They did a CT, and there was no signs of cancer or anything crazy like that, which is wonderful. Um, but it continued. So I've been to the doctor this week, and I have what is called a, slip, a slipped rib, several ribs. It is my left rib cage on the bottom. And uh, they actually attach to the other ribs on the bottom by cartilage and ligaments. Um, the top ones are actually attached to a bone, uh, a breastplate. Um, but the bottom ones are not. And on my left side, they have detached, okay? And my ribs are actually, they've, they've come up loose and so when I bend over, when I turn, when I cough, when I inhale deep, you can hear this click, 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 you know, and it's real easy to feel and hear. And at first when it started, it liked to drive me crazy because every move I made, I could feel them inside of my body. And it was just so weird. But now I'm used to it, so it's not bothering me so much. But the good thing is they only caused a lot of pain about four days or five days. And I know I probably did it from pulling our luggage when we got to the airport. Um, we had a lot of luggage. So each of us had to pull the luggage. And I'm not used to it. My body's not in, you know, my body's just weird. And so apparently I tore my rib cage uh, loose on the left side. So I go Tuesday to see my regular doctor and he will write a CT scan um, to be ordered, and then I'll go to a thoracic surgeon. Hopefully, there's something they can do. I hope it doesn't have to stay detached forever. Um, and if it does, that's fine. As long as it doesn't puncture my lungs or get into the nerves, I'm okay. That's the biggest problem with it, is those ribs, since they're not attached anymore, have ends on them, and they can get into some nerve endings and cause a lot of pain, which I really don't want to be. Uh, I, don't, I, want, I don't want that to happen. So I want to go to somebody that knows more about it. And if I could do any kind of therapy or anything to try to keep those ribs from doing something they shouldn't do, um, it will be good. So uh, <laughs> there's always something with my body. And I do break most of the statistics. Of course, when you look it up, it's really odd. And a lot of people have never heard about it. So, of course, it's going to happen to me. Um, the trip was good. I can't talk a lot about it, but we did really well, and um, I, I was laying in the bed last night, and I was praying, and I thought, you know, Lord, I'm, I really appreciate the opportunity He gave me to go um, out to California, but I don't really know that uh, having my ribs detach <laughs> was worth it or not. We'll see. Um, because I'm afraid it might be like that for a really long time. Um, but it just goes to show, I just think, even if I think I can do everything everybody else does, it just goes to show that I can't, you know. And chemotherapy does change our bodies, and we have a lot of residual effects, whether people want to believe it or not. 
Um, so y'all pray for my rib cage. Just, I know it sounds crazy, but when I bend over, it's click, 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 click. And when I twist to the side, it's click, 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 click. It's the weirdest thing. Um, and I guess that's really it. Um, nothing else major is going on in our lives right now. Uh, Chris is back to doing his videos for Nichols Retirement Empire. He went to a football game last night. It was really, really cold. I thought he was crazy, but he wore his coveralls. Um, so he stayed warm. He said the poor guy he went with, um, all he had was a sweatshirt. He grabbed a coat, and it was the, his son's coat, so he couldn't wear it. So he liked froze, I think. But anyway, thank y'all for joining me this morning to read the psalm, the first psalm in the book of Psalms. And uh, I guess we'll end with a prayer. And I'm just going to, I just want to read, um, I'm going to read the blessed man one more time because being blessed is a big deal, y'all. Um, and we are blessed by so many things. It is the week of Thanksgiving. And since it's the week of Thanksgiving, we should give thanks and be thankful and realize how much we are blessed, okay? So we're going to just read the blessing part. I won't read the unrighteous part because most of us want to be blessed and most of us want to live so that we can be blessed. So let's just read it right quick and then we'll say our prayer. And it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That is a beautiful psalm, is it not? And we should want to walk in the counsel of the godly. We shall want to meditate on his word day and night, so that we can be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water because the Lord and the, His Son, Jesus Christ, is, is our water, okay? We need to recognize that He is our source and He is our water and know that we can come to His Word anytime we want to and be lifted up and He's always with us. So let's say our prayers this morning. I hope y'all have a blessed Saturday. And um, hopefully I'll get to cook a little bit today. I need to start getting ready. We have a big meal at church tomorrow. So let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much um, for everything in our life, the good and the bad. We thank you for our health, whether it's good or bad, because we know that you are in control of our life. And um, I pray that you would help each and every one of us uh, meditate on your word day and night. Help us remember um, wh where we are in this life and who we are in this life and who you are. Help us always to know that you, Lord, are more important than anything in our lives. And without you, we would be nothing. It is you who makes us capable of doing everything we do. It is you who gives us everything we have. And we owe um, you our praise and our worship. Um, thank you for this week of Thanksgiving. May every day be a blessing to us. And may we be a blessing to others and our families. Thank you for the ladies who um, want to be spiritual and listen um, and heed your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a blessed day. Thank you for watching Real Southern Woman. It's so good to see everybody this morning. I see Janine is here. Kathleen is here. Uh, Donna. Nancy. Ellen. Patsy. My mother's uh, best friend's name was Patsy. Dorothy. Kathy. Uh, Jimmy Sue. Velda. Mary King. Joan. Lori. Rhonda. And Marilyn. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Somebody else could have tuned in last. Let's see. Oh, Joanne and Johnette. Hey, Johnette. 
Johnette, um, I'll say this to you right quick. It's so funny. Um, I'm trying to remember who did it. Anyway, they posted on the class of 1987 yesterday on Facebook, and there was a picture of me and Beth, and it was such a pretty picture in 1997. And Beth is just a beautiful woman on the inside and out, and I love her so much, Johnette. You did such a good job raising such a beautiful girl. I just wanted to tell you that. Um, anyway, y'all have a wonderful day, and I love you. Blessings and happy Thanksgiving week. We'll see you again tomorrow. Love you. Bye.